really what I needed for opioids at this point because there are lots of different potencies, routes of administration and time course that they act over. We'll just focus on the common opioids to make this a bit consumable. I'm going to reproduce a quick tutorial that my Reg and Radonc has given me because I found it really useful. The main indications for them are going to be acute pain and also cancer pain. Very relevant on my Pimonc and Radonc rotation. So, here's what we got. Stick into the common ones and in order of ascending potency, today we're going to talk about morphine, oxycodone, hydromorphone, and fentanyl. Generally speaking, you would start with a morphine or oxycodone, and then as required, you can move up into fentanyl or hydromorphone. Then we'll categorize them by their immediate or slow release forms, and within those substances, there are different routes of administration available depending on what would work best for the patient. To give you an idea of potency, we usually use morphine as a comparative base. Oral oxycodone is approximately 1.5 times the potency of oral morphine. Oral fentanyl, mm -hmm. oral hydromorphone is about five times the strength of oral morphine. IV fentanyl is about a hundred times the strength of oral morphine. We compare oral morphine to IV fentanyl because fentanyl doesn't actually come in an oral form. But otherwise when you do opioid conversions you switch the dose into the oral morphine dose. So those equivalent dosages and opioid conversions in general are really important. For morphine the immediate acting form is morphine. Immediate acting version can come in lots of different forms. It can come in oral, syrups, IV, IM, subcut, so on. Heaps. <laughs> the slow acting forms include MS content or caffeinol. MS content comes in tablet form. Caffeinol comes in a capsule form, which means that you can break it open if you're having difficulty swallowing the capsule. Content in MS content meaning continuous release. That's something that I didn't know that's a handy way to remember what's what. For oxycodone, our immediate release forms include endone, which comes in a tablet, and also IV oxycodone, which is sometimes used in PCA, patient controlled analgesia. Which is when the patient in the bed has their own button for administering the pain relief whenever they need it. I know that sounds dangerous for anybody who hasn't heard the concept before, but they have a max out built into them so the patient can't overdose or use too much. That means that if they need more pain relief and there's been a sufficient time between their last dose that it's still safe, they can get their relief in the most timely way possible. Our slow release versions of oxycodone include oxycontin, which comes in a tablet form, and also tarjan. I read that tarjan has basically taken over the place of oxycodone now. Tarjan is different from oxycodone because there's a second active ingredient in the target and that is naloxone. Now naloxone is actually an antagonist to opioid receptors which seems really counterintuitive. To give my simplified explanation of how that works and why we like to do it, there are opioid receptors in the gut. One of the complications of taking opioids is to getting constipation. That's because the opioids bind to the receptors in the gut and that causes constipation. Naloxone's job in Tarjan is to block those opioid receptors in the gut so that the opioids can't bind to them. Therefore, you get less constipation. When the Tarjan is absorbed into the bloodstream, the naloxone undergoes what's called first pass metabolism in the liver. The naloxone goes through the liver in an early stage and the liver breaks it down so that naloxone no longer has a antagonizing effect. So now in the bloodstream we've got the opioid alone working giving us our pain relief effect and the naloxone is not inhibiting it. So I think that's really clever. Apparently not perfect. Some patients still experience side effects but reducing the side effects of constipation is excellent because patients often have to then take even more medications to fix the constipation. It can be a bit of a cascading situation. Like I said earlier hydromorphone does not come in a slow release. It only comes in an immediate release. Again this can be given in multiple different forms just like morphine, oral, tablet, liquid, Liquid, subcut, IV, whatever you like. Finally, fentanyl, our most potent common opioid. Immediate release forms come in IV, subcut, and fentanyl is actually the thing for younger children when they need some pain relief, it can be given intranasally. You might see that at times in the emergency department. The slow release version of fentanyl is actually just the patch. One patch is used over 72 hours. I thought I might share that with you. They're really important drugs because they work really well. Sometimes they're the only thing that can relieve patients' pain, but they can also come with really important side effects. You will see them used commonly in the hospital. I know learning opioids for me has been quite difficult over time because there are so many different names and the differences can seem quite subtle, but I don't feel like I've really quite been able to retain the important information until up to this point. So I really appreciate that tutorial that my reg gave me and I hope that it can give you a nice base to start from as well with learning opioids. Okay, I am gonna love you and leave you because I need to get some of my own OSCE study done before I go and give this tutorial a five. <sighs> so nice to have some free time to study. Saturday morning, phase one, pack. Done. Phase two, teach body pump. Done. Phase three, rush to the airport. In progress. Now we're 
we've got a little bit more extra time than we hope, which is always nice to not be in a rush when you're at the airport. Our airport is actually up for an award against airports like the Copenhagen Airport and JFK in New York in the category of sense of place, which is all about the theme reflecting the destination, which is one such so that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? How's it going? With their multivariable findings, they're saying there's a suggestion that an improvement in one of those traits could lead to improvements in another trait, and that they're negatively correlated with burnout, which is a hugely important topic in medicine. I'm enjoying that reading. Really to keep working on that little reflective piece for me. But yeah, we have arrived. So.
Sydney on Sister and there's still half day left for our Sunday so we are gonna go and drink some coffee before one o'clock to our traditional day in a cafe Sunday. Remember that time where I was like, oh, surgery's done, my 7 a.m. stunts are done? Well, I've been fooled, my friends, I've been fooled. 7 a.m. starts this week on our Calvary rotation. This is my third week of my medicine rotation. We have a total of six weeks of actual clinical placement, split up into two lots of three weeks. In between those three blocks, we had one week of a group learning week, our lecture week, and then again, another week of a break, which is really our mid-year June break. Calvary is a very heavily student-led week. There are no doctors that are on the wards all the time. Calvary and St. Vincent's more specifically is one of our private hospitals here in Launceston, and we're on one of the medical wards in there. It's student led because there are no doctors that are actually permanently there on the ward and the doctors just come and see their private patients as required. So as students we go in the morning and we do a bit of our own ward around and there are some tutorials out the week where we bring our patient cases to present them at the tutorial with a consultant that has some patients at the private. We present those cases to him and then we have a discussion slash he questions us on things that are potentially issues or that we should know. <laughs> we actually had one of those tutorials just then from a quarter to one to quarter past two and we were along two patient cases, we being myself and my friend Anna, another med student, we are rotating week by week together on our med rotation. And that went well. Our next tutorial will actually not be until Friday because Anna will be hosting the Teddy Bear Hospital at one of the schools around on system tomorrow. And then our consultant will actually be away up the northwest coast on Thursday, so it's going to need to be Friday mornings. Apart from these tutorials, to include a week on our Calvary rotation, we do a presentation at their grand round. That happens at lunchtime on Friday. We pick a patient that we've seen throughout the week and done a big examination on, and we present to a group that includes that consultant, one or two of our academics from uni, a group of nursing students, any nurses or other clinicians at Calvary that would like to come. That presentation is supposed to go for about an hour and there are usually lots of questions so it buffs out to about an hour and a half and we just make a presentation up on the screen to go with that. We think that we might have actually already found our patient as well this morning that's really interesting, potentially quite complicated, so we probably have a fair of work to do for the next few days. This morning we also met with a nurse who works over at the Calvary that has been employed by the uni. She's facilitating our placement over there because there aren't any university stuff otherwise over there. For us it's very separate from the public hospital. Just to ask simple questions when you're on a new ward, you often have different computer systems and perhaps even slightly different etiquette, different meeting times and so on. So we met her at 9.15, then I went and took a tutor from my client from the library again for an hour at 11.30 and our tutorial with our consultant that I just talked about was on at 12.45. This weekend we're actually having our trauma weekend so this weekend is a uni weekend too. We'll be driving about an hour away down to a place called Oatlands, the whole of our system clinical school so 40 something students, a bunch of consultants from the hospital and a handful of our academics too and we'll be learning emergency trauma stuff so that'll be cool but I will talk to you guys about that at another time when I'm not this hungry. 